All right, we got Cole at the wheel. I'm holding the kayak down and you're headed to the back country. Here we go. We made it, we made it, we made it. Where are we, Cole? Echo Lake. Echo Lake. Yeah. I had never heard of Echo Lake before. Me either. And Cole hadn't either and he grew up in the area. Cole's family recently bought a piece of property in the middle of nowhere, Sunset Country, and it came with access to a lake, which is pretty pretty amazing. I know a lot of a lot of you guys down in Minnesota, it's common to have lakes with no public access. Around here, most lakes have public access. Most of them have a launch. This lake does not, this is private. Kind of exciting because this lake, Cole can fish and his friends and family, and maybe I think there's one other crew that might have property on the other side, but it's kind of a, a private lake. They've just started fishing in the last couple days and they found some walleye. So Cole said, hey, do you wanna come? We'll bring your kayak in and we'll, you know, do some auto charting, see what's going on and see what you can do. So the boys helped me out, Joe and Cole. All right, the yak is loaded. I'm gonna throw the rest of the stuff in the Yeti backpack. What do you think, boss? Guide from Tightline Adventures. Oh, should be good. I mean, it's been good the last couple days. Two days he's been smoking them on the canoe with, with not really knowing, I mean, no electronics, just going out and catching fish. So not that electronics help you catch more fish, but I think I'll be able to fish a little more efficiently than a canoe. Cole may want to buy a fishing kayak after this, but I'm leaving it with him for a couple days so he'll get to learn the lake, auto chart the whole thing, see if there's uh, any sweet spots, rock piles, that sort of stuff. Anyways, we're switching over to GoPro view and we'll see you guys in a little bit. Welcome to Echo Lake, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Cole Forsyth, Tightline, Tightline Guide Service. Did I get it right? All right, we are uh, using a bunny leech. This is like a pike fly. I'm sure a walleye will have no problem eating it. I'm gonna try not to hook Cole. We're fly fishing today, guys. First fly video of the year. I know, I know. I said I was gonna do a bunch of fly videos this year and then it never happened, so here we are. And guaranteed walleye on the first cast. I've caught a couple walleye on the fly rod. I think my biggest might be a 25 or 26 inch, and it was right during the mayfly hatch. Come on, we got a perch. There's perch in Echo Lake. <laughs> We're not skunked. Wow, he ate that really good. That's what they're eating. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, I know Cole was saying he caught them near the launch the other day. We're just gonna kind of troll around, uh, auto chart, and just try to get a lay of the land. And I'm gonna see if we can side image some fish, because that's pretty important. All right, there's a main lake point here. We're gonna take a couple casts. Didn't really mark too much, but we'll see what happens. I, they don't even really even know what's all in this lake. There's bass, I don't know if there's crappies, but they do know there's decent walleye. So a lot of people think fly fishing, they think on the surface. They think dry fly, they think a river runs through it, but that's really not the case. So often using sinking line and you're targeting fish below the surface. Obviously catching fish on the surface is the best, but just in so many situations, it's not realistic. You could catch 10 times as many fish if you went under. Line control is the toughest part of fly fishing. That's why sometimes you see people with little baskets or like tripping mats, different stuff like that, because just line getting tangled will hurt your efficiency in a hurry. All right, guys, I'm gonna troll. I'm not ashamed. I'm not a purist. Trolling is just such a good way to catch fish. I will cast them. I'd rather catch them casting, but I want to do whatever's going to catch the most fish. And in this case, I think that's going to be trolling. I'll hold on to the rod at least. I won't put it in that rod holder. There's a tree. Why don't we take a cast at a tree? Get that rod tip low and strip. This is called stripping. It's like reeling in for fly fishing. I think fly fishing is cool because you can do it at any normal fishing situation. You can fly fish. You don't need a, a trout stream. You know, you can fly fish for catfish, you can fly fish for carp on a small pond, you can, you know, do bass, whatever. They've gotta be stacked somewhere, we need to find them. The wind is blowing into this corner, so that's what I'm predicting. We are still fishing, we're trolling, and that's a piece of advice, even if you're paddling or whatever, put your rod in a rod holder. Even if you're gonna get snagged a little bit, trolling catches a lot of fish until you find the spot you wanna cast. Shallow walleyes on the fly, that's the goal. A small lake like this, wind can play such a big factor. So I'm fishing where the wind is blowing, where Cole was catching the last couple of days. He said the wind was blowing into that bay, so I don't want to give up on the fly rod. I don't. I know you guys are going to razz me if I do. Well, one big walleye. One. Make the night. Walleye on the fly rod just ain't easy. I could... Oh, I, I can't pick up the swim bait. I can't. Don't do it, Jay.
There's a fish. There's a fish. First fish on Echo and it feels decent. Oh, just chowed it. This fish has some weight. Feels like a big pike. Come on. Come on, what do we got? Ooh, big head shakes, big head shakes. Don't be a pike. This is big, guys. Come on. Come on, be that one bite. Oh boy. First fish on the fly rod this year. What do we have? I got pretty light fluoro. Tip it, as the fly guys call it. Big walleye, big, big, big walleye. Oh man, this will make the day. This is all I want. Oh, that's big. Oh, that's big. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, 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 come on. Come on. Oh, yeah! Woo -hoo -hoo! Guys, look at this walleye on the fly rod. <laughs> look at that walleye. Amazing on that leech. First fish. Oh man, look at that big beauty. Beautiful golden walleye. Oh, so good. I gotta get myself organized after that. That was insane. Yeah, that fish made the night for me. I'm glad I had a net. It's so tough to land a fish on a fly rod in general, but in a kayak, there's a fish, there's a fish. What do we got? Big perch. A little bit of everything in here. Perch Pro 2020. So basically when you're fly fishing, people ask, well, why do you whip it back and forth so much? Thing is, you're casting a very light fly a long distance. You could never get that distance on a spinning rod or a bait casting rod. So what you're doing is you're casting this very thick line, this dark green line. That's actually what you're casting. So you're getting the momentum and the fly is just coming along for the ride. Normally with a fishing lure, you're casting the weight and using the momentum of that lure. Now you're casting the line and the fly just comes along so you can use a tiny, tiny fly. And that's why it's effective is because when you're dealing with finicky fish or fish along a small presentation, that's when fly fishing can definitely shine. As, as far as fly rods go, if you guys are looking to get into fly fishing, they're not medium, medium light, medium heavy. It's, it's by weight. So there's a numbering system bottom is like a zero or a double zero it can go all the way up to probably like a 15 weight or something so middle if you're doing like bass small walleye medium sized trout i do like a five to seven weight if you're doing pike muskies you're doing a 10 to a 12 weight if you're doing mako sharks you're probably doing a 15 weight rod or something like that so as far as line goes this orange line at the back that's called your backing that is pretty inexpensive it's like tip up line it's dacron that's a couple dollars probably you could get a spool of backing for 10 bucks, 15 bucks. The next is that dark line and that's your fly line. And this is where it gets expensive. There's different types. There's floating, there's sinking, intermediate sink, fast sink. So each fly line, you're gonna be spending somewhere between $30 upwards of $120. So that's where your investment is, but it's different than normal fishing line because it doesn't go bad after a season. You could use this, this fly line's probably like six or seven seasons old. If it's a floating line, I might lose a little of that floating capability, but for a sinking line, it's not that big of a deal. And then at the end, the business end of things, I just have a piece of fluorocarbon. You can get fancy tapered leaders. You can learn a bunch of knots doing, you know, heavier line to lighter line to lighter line. I just tied a straight chunk of eight pound fluorocarbon to my fly, and this is a bunny leech. Get you guys a close look at this. Pretty basic, it's just a little piece of rabbit strip, uh, bead eyes or cone eyes on it to give it some weight to go down. That's pretty much the extent of it. I think fly fishing sometimes gets very complicated and gets intimidating, but I mean, you can get a setup for a hundred bucks. That's, you know, good to go. You don't, you don't need to get too deep into it right away. But I do not want to end the day with one walleye, even though that made the day. I wanna I want catch a couple more. So we're gonna keep pounding around. We're gonna keep casting around. I'm gonna do some trolling, gonna do some more casting and we'll see if we can break that, but that's, that was pretty sweet. So like I said, I'm using intermediate sink fly line, so I can pretty much count it down. And to be completely honest, I don't know what the exact sink rate is, but I can count it down. So if I want to fish in shallower water or just under the surface, well, then I just start stripping right away. But otherwise, if I want to fish, you know, near the bottom, probably where I want to be for walleye, I'll let it sink. I'll just, you know, wait a couple seconds. And as I go, I'll just, I can feel when my fly is dragging on the bottom. So I'll kind of, you know, play it by ear. So right now, cast it out. Just gonna let it sit a couple seconds and then I'm gonna start stripping. And then that line will just start a couple feet deeper.
All right, guys, this is what this is what I switched to. Less of a lychee pattern, more of a minnowy pattern. It's a clouser, I think is what it's called. So before we lose all of our light, basically I just fished around the whole lake. I focused on the areas where the wind was blowing. There's fish, there's fish, there's fish. Stay on, stay on. Come on, come on. One more. It's not tiny. Oh boy, it's not tiny. Switching flies might've paid off. I'm thinking big walleye. Ooh, come on, baby. This is just so awkward. Oh, it's a big walleye. Please, 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 please. Like landing any fish on a kayak is tough, but. Oh, come on. Oh, yes, gold. We got gold. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Fly fishing for walleyes, uh, in a lot of situations, it's not um, maybe the most effective, but man, was that fun. He's not crazy long, but he's just so fat on the clouser. Oh, guys, look at that walleye. Yeah, right there. Look at that. Chowed. The clouser, probably another 23, probably 23, 24 inch fish. Fly popping out. Guys, what an awesome evening. Come on, baby. Oh, so good. Guys, I didn't really talk about location too much. It's a small lake, so basically I've been focusing on where the wind's blowing, uh, blowing that warm water, blowing the bait fish. The walleyes come pretty shallow at this time of year. Just burning a bunch of shoreline, uh, anchoring with the pro nav when we want to hang on a spot. This has been fun. It's, it's prime time. We got about 10 more minutes and we're gonna, I mean, I, I'm happy with two. That, those, quality of fish were just incredible. Yeah, I mean, the day's made, we'll make a couple more casts and we'll head back to the launch. I don't wanna get greedy, I mean, yes. Oh, I'd like to catch another one. Yeah, of course I'd like to catch another one, but to catch two big wally like that on the fly, that was sweet. That was so sweet. I'm almost jigging the fly right now when it comes close to the boat. Yeah, there we go, there we go, another good one. Man, I marked something and I thought I'd hang on him a little bit longer. Ooh, ooh, what do we got? Guys, prime time is upon us. What do we got? I can't tell what that is. Oh, that is, that's, that's not exciting. I mean, it is. Nice little pike. Guys, uh, I'm calling it right there with that fish. Not a walleye, but another fun fight on the fly rod. Um, huge shout out to Cole and his family for letting me fish on their little oasis, Echo Lake. Uh, they got an Instagram page. We're probably gonna post a couple of the pictures that I took from here. And uh, eventually down the road, 2021, 2022, they're gonna be opening this up um, for visitors, for people to come fish. There are rumors of a cabin being built. Lots of cool stuff. Make sure to follow them on Instagram. Also, Cole has a guiding service, Tight Lines Guide Service, if you wanna fish with him. He's all over Northwest Ontario. Muskie, pike, bass, walleye, whatever you wanna do. Yeah, that, that's all I got, guys. Don't forget to wear your life jacket. We'll catch you guys next time.